Well, we have 21 young people here with us today, and we have been discussing both in London as well as in our, in our separate countries what we think that the world leaders should discuss in, within the G20 meetings. And one thing that came across is that it's not a matter of big or small governments. Right now we have emerging economies right here. We also have developed economies. However, it's a matter of effective governments, and that's what we're asking for where we have governments that, in fact, act effectively with all the instruments that they have. Uh, with, in my hands, I have our community, and these are the objectives which we have been working on on the past two days. And what they involve, in fact, is three broad areas, if I can just name them quickly. Mm -hmm. And the first one is a reform and more investment in social infrastructure. And that has to do with educating young people, educating adults, and educating the business sector. In that sense, having more investment and also opportunity for growth within public and private sector. At the same time, we also have one that calls for investment in renewable energies. Right now, I think we can all agree that we, can, we, can, we have recognized the need for interventions in the issue of climate change. And as world leaders, we would like to see more of a discussion, more of, a, of, of, a, of an effective and more em emphasis on the importance of renewable energies. And the last one is the one that will, is the point of discussion this, this week, and that's on banking as well as financial regulation. Yes, we know there's a crisis, however, within the regulation of it, the effectiveness is a matter of question. And that's the one that you're asking for, that there is in fact reform, yet at the same time there are new interventions that are put on that. There is an explanation. <laughs> we, have, we have everything. You, we have a soft copy, we have a hard copy. Where they are playing on your way to Australia or wherever, you will have everything, <laughs> everything with you. And we'd just like to hear your response on, on, our, on our objectives that we want the world leaders to discuss, and that you, you come back to us and tell us how, how these have been met. Ourselves, we will be monitoring and looking at what the world leaders are in fact doing. So we believe that you have, you have a, a hard task in your hands, <laughs> and we would like you to perform on that. Thank you. Well, um, get out of that. <laughs> can't, can't, uh, can't. Uh, well, the first thing I want to say before I say what I can't do is it's very nice to be the old man of a uh, group of uh, people deliberating on uh, the future. Uh, I know about the Global Change Makers Program from uh, not just from uh, briefings from the British Council, but from the young people I met in Washington, I think, uh, on a visit to the U.S. And I was hugely impressed by the. Obviously by the breadth, but by the dynamism, by the idealism, by the passion, and by the experiences that have been accumulated in this remarkable uh, group. And I wanted to just come and see you today, even for a very short uh, period, because I think one of the founding ideas that's driving the Prime Minister forward in his work for the G20 has been completely missed in all of the discussion. Some of the discussion has recognized that it's significant that this is a G20 meeting, not a G8 meeting. Some of the discussion has recognized that for obvious uh, reasons. But I think what has been completely missed is uh, the idea that to effect change in the modern world, you don't just need governments to be active, you need citizens to be active. You need a civilian surge, not just a governmental or a military uh, surge. And I think that your um, document, <laughs> uh, your thinking, um, not least when it has appeared on my blog and therefore has an audience of millions around the world, if only. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but what your, what your work and your commitment, and all of you coming here from all over the world and giving up your time and your energy and your ideas, is you are a small eddy in the tide that otherwise would say this is all about governments. In fact, it's not all about governments. It's got to be bottom up as well as uh, top uh, down. There are big decisions to be taken this week, not just about the financial sector, actually. One of the things that the Prime Minister has decided is that the agenda should be about financial reform, but because this is an economic crisis, not just a financial crisis, it should be also about macroeconomic coordination, it should be about trade, it should be about development, and it should be about low carbon, or at least giving a signal about the low carbon uh, aspect. And I think that, therefore, the, the three topics that you've chosen here uh, are very well chosen. Final thing um, I want to say is that there is an old uh, saying which was taught to me by the chief rabbi, actually, of this country. It speaks to the first priority or the first area that you have highlighted. And what 
the, the proverb says that if you want to defend a nation, you need an army. But if you would want to advance a civilization, <coughs> you need education. And that, I think, speaks to the priority that you've given to the importance of helping people learn how to learn, but also broadening the horizons that um, really can, should be limitless in, in the modern world, but for too many people aren't. So I really do applaud you for giving up the uh, time and, uh, and effort to, to be part of this. I really thank the British Council for their leadership on this issue and their insight that the alumni of the Change Makers program over the next 10, 20 years are going to be a remarkable uh, group of people. So although there is a challenge uh, to me to report back to you, the challenge for you is to become the leaders of tomorrow, and that is a much greater uh, <laughs> challenge that I give back to you, but I do so with great confidence that you will live up to that. So thank you very, very much indeed, and really I hope you enjoy uh, the time in London and learn from it and, and stick together as a group that really are going to make connections right across the world. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.